the love of Jesus be with us this morning. Uh, so the title of my message is A Great Love of a Simple Woman. The key verse is, therefore, I tell you, how many sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little, loves little. Today, as we heard the announcement about our coming International Survival Conference, we'll have it uh, at uh, University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign, from August 3 through 6 next year. Do you remember the theme of the conference? Do you remember what is? His glory. His glory. So we have uh, this uh, title, His Glory, which means that glory of the one and only Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. So our main prayer topic is to see the glory of Jesus. To see the glory of Jesus through his uh, salvation ministry, suffering, death on the cross, resurrection, and the second coming. So we want to, we desire to experience the glory of the presence of our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit throughout all this preparation of a conference from now on. We want to see the glory of Jesus Christ. Do you know what will happen when you see the glory of Jesus? And uh, yes, yeah, so we will be filled with the Holy Spirit. The glory of Jesus will fill us with his Holy Spirit. And we can feel with the love of Jesus who forgive our sins. Our spirits will be renewed and our love for Jesus will be, will be restored. And we will love Jesus more and more. And we can serve him with a great joy and happiness. This is why we have to see the glory of Jesus. Do you want to experience his glory? Amen. I pray that we can meet the glory of Jesus during this time. From now on, you can pray to see the glory of Jesus Christ. So today we will meet a woman who experienced really the forgiveness of Jesus, who really saw the glory of Jesus, and who expressed her love for Jesus wholeheartedly. Jesus received her love very mindfully to heal her wounded heart. On the other hand, the Pharisee Simon didn't love Jesus because he hadn't been forgiven of his sins. We can see this contrast between the woman and the Simon. How much do you love Jesus? I really pray that we can learn the secret of loving Jesus more through today's message. One of the Pharisees named Simon invited Jesus to have a dinner with him. The Pharisees, as we heard, were the largest and the more important religious group of Israel in Jesus' time. Most of them opposed Jesus. You know why? Because Jesus refused to accept their interpretations of the law. Then why this uh, Pharisee Simon, why did he invite Jesus to have a dinner with him? It was because he really respected Jesus. It seems that he didn't respect Jesus because he didn't give this uh, basic, uh, basic etiquette to an honorable guest. Then he uh, invited Jesus to have some kind of argument. No, we can't see any argument here. So maybe he invited Jesus because he wanted to, he was very curious, seems that, who Jesus is, what kind of person is this? And he really wanted, because Jesus had a power, authority, teaching the word of God. And Jesus performed many miracles. 
So maybe this uh, gave him some curiosity of who is Jesus, something like that. And maybe he wanted to show up himself by having read Jesus because Jesus was uh, getting more popular, popular. Oh, if I can have a dinner with this person, people will see me. Oh, I also can be a very good person, right? Like this. We don't know, maybe. But the important thing is that we can see that the Pharisee Simon didn't know that Jesus was the Son of God. He didn't know that Jesus was the promised Messiah. But Jesus accepted his invitation willingly, as he was open to everyone to announce the gospel, the good news to. In fact, Jesus accepted other invitations to in different occasions of, uh, of Pharisees. And Jesus really went to the Pharisee Simon's house and reclined at the table. You see that reclined at the table means uh, in that time, the, to recline at the table was a Greek custom, which the Jews adopted for festive banquet. So those who were at a banquet, they reclined at the table with their head to the table and with their feet away away table, right? So we can imagine that Jesus reclined like his left arm here, and uh, his, uh, yeah, his hand here, his uh, feet, bare feet, and away from the table, and with uh, some cushion, he was eating like this. It's uh, very comfortable, right? <laughs> Maybe you want to have <laughs> just kind of, uh, uh, but if we eat like this at your house, your parents will, yeah, uh, maybe, yeah, you'll be very rebuked, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah, anyway, it was a Jewish custom. And uh, yes, yeah, so while Jesus was uh, having dinner with the Pharisee, Simon, an unexpected thing happened. What happened? A woman in the town, town who lived a simple life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. So she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. It was a so amazing event. So actually when we read this ESV, it says that, and behold, look at this woman. Wow, it's amazing. But why? Why it was so amazing that this woman came to Jesus to see Jesus? Because the Bible describes that she lived a simple life. What does it mean that she lived a simple life? which means that the people of the town knew that she was a sinner. She was a public sinner, which meant that possibly she was a prostitute. So when in the Bible said that sinners, we can see that two persons, right? One is a two class of people, prostitute and the collectors of, of tax collectors. So we don't know her name. Some church tradition says that she was uh, Mary Magdalene. But we don't know. There is uh, no biblical ground for this. And, uh, but uh, maybe this woman was very, was, uh, maybe very well known in the, in, the, in the town. So some people can ask, how, she, how could she enter the Pharisee's house? We have many questions, right? Because we need to understand the context. So some people ask how she could enter the Pharisee's house. And she was invited by the Pharisee. I don't think so. <laughs> Pharisee did not invite her. But she could enter the house. No, because it was a Jewish custom that when a rabbi was invited, all class of people could enter the house to listen to the rabbi's teaching. So everybody could come in, and she could also come, and she could listen to the word of Jesus. However, it was very difficult for her to come to the house of Pharisee, of Pharisee's house. Why? Because she was a public sinner. She was a prostitute. People would point at her, and they would reject her, saying, Oh, look at her. Why is she here? Why she's here, something like that. Absolutely, she needed a lot of boldness to come to see Jesus. But she did. But she came to Jesus, overcoming all these difficulties. This is amazing. So oh, look at her. She came to Jesus. 
She came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. Alabaster was a fine grained white gypsum used to make vases and the jars. So as we know that most uh, spices to produce perfume in those times were imported from Arabia, Africa, India, and Persia. So the cost of uh, perfume was very expensive. But she brought this uh, alabaster jar with the perfume and to preserve the special scent of the perfume and the, the people use alabaster jar. And they broke this, uh, this uh, jar to, to use perfume. What did she do then? The Bible describes what she did. She stood behind Jesus at his feet. Jesus was eating there. She stood at his feet. And she began to weep. Began to weep. Weep. Why? Suddenly, some woman came, began to weep. <laughs> it's so, so not, you know, difficult to understand. And, uh, but she wept uncontrollably, and her tears began to wet the feet of Jesus. So Jesus' feet were, as you know, that Jesus' feet was covered with dust, right? And uh, because uh, Simon didn't give any water, so his feet was not clean, the dust, and her, her tears and down on his uh, wet his uh, feet. And, you know, you can see that all Jesus' feet was uh, so messed up with tears and, uh, and tears and the dust, or, and she saw that, oh, he was so, sometimes you could think, oh, it's dirty, I need to clean it. You know, she wanted to clean up her feet, but she didn't have any towel, but she couldn't find any towel. What did she do? Using her long hair, began to clean up the feet of Jesus. Wow. So beautiful. And she also, what did she do? She kissed, washing the feet of Jesus, rid of her tears and the washing and the kissed. Kissed and the pour this perfume on the feet. Can you imagine? We need a lot of imagination, really. Imagine that and suddenly in the middle of our Sunday worship service, someone come and did these things. Oh, people will be all over them. What she's doing? So, so amazing. And it was a very shocking event that caught attention of all the people who were there to listen to the teaching of Jesus. But why did she weep tears, wipe Jesus' feet with her hair? She kissed her, his feet and poured perfume on them. Why did she do it? It was an expression of her repentance for sins. Because she had a lot of uh, sorrow because of uh, her sins. So she cried, she wept, and read the tears, or she wet the feet of Jesus. And it was the expression of her gratitude because Jesus forgave her sins. It was the expression of her love for Jesus, who loved her and who forgave her. Actually, it was the maximum expression of her repentance. Gratitude and the love for Jesus. Really, it was one of the most beautiful events throughout the ministry of Jesus. What was the reaction of Jesus to the women's extravagant expression of love? What did Jesus do? Nothing. Jesus didn't do anything but just received her expression of love looking at her silently. In fact, it was a very awkward situation for Jesus. Everyone was looking at him. And the simple woman who was weeping tears, wiping his feet with her hair, kissing her feet, and pouring perfume on them. So some people 
could have think that, oh, there was something going on between Jesus and the woman. You know that many people think, uh, many say whatever. And furthermore, she was a public sinner. She was a prostitute. Not easy. Not easy to be in this situation. One day, many years ago, when I was in Venezuela, when I was uh, eating lunch with uh, some brothers of the church at a humble cafe, two ladies sat at the table next to ours. And uh, we were eating, and they entered. I realized that they were prostitutes by her costumes, and I felt very uncomfortable with the situation. Jesus could feel very uncomfortable. Jesus could have uh, said to her, what are you doing? Stop it. Right? Or Jesus could say, it's enough. It's enough. It's enough. <laughs> right? But Jesus didn't say anything to her. Nor did he stop her. Why? It was because Jesus understood her heart. Jesus understood her wounded emotions, her sorrow, her agony, frustration, regret, anger, etc. It was because Jesus wanted to heal her by accepting her expression of repentance, gratitude, and love. Jesus understood her love language and received it as it was. Jesus is so mindful, loves a lot, loves us a lot. You know, there is a, a book, as you, maybe you know that, Five langu Love Languages, right? Gary Chapman, American author, wrote a book about the five languages, which was word of affirmation, quality time, receiving gift, acts of service, and physical touch. You know, some of our couples, they studied about uh, language uh, to know that what is your language of love, love language, what is your wife's love language. Do you know what is your wife's love language? I don't know where yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. but, you know, it seems that the woman's love language was physical touching. She touched it. She wiped and she, she, she kissed the feet of Jesus. She received, really, she was, a, she, she was a touching him. And Jesus received her expression of love. And Jesus loved her as her Savior and her Creator. Jesus understands our hearts and emotions. And Jesus receives us as we are. It is amazing. It's a great blessing that we have with Jesus who can understand us, who can receive our hearts, who loves us. We can do whatever in Jesus if you love Jesus. It's amazing. Since I was meditating on this uh, passage, a worship song has been coming to my mind. I was just singing, <laughs> singing this word. This worship is a little... Yeah, repeating, repeating. I want you to listen to this uh, music. Can you please put this uh, worship song? And or maybe you, you know that you can follow the song or so. The, the song is, uh, Thank You, Jesus.
It's always I was just singing <laughs> so amazing. I had my heart was just so uh, filled with the love of Jesus. Really, thank you, Jesus, for loving us and for dying on the cross for our sins. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Amen. To Jesus, her action was were a beautiful expression of love. However, many people felt offended by the presence and the action of a simple woman. Especially the host, the Pharisee Simon, didn't like it at all. He felt that the simple woman ruined his banquet. Moreover, he couldn't accept that Jesus didn't reject her filthy actions. He couldn't understand why Jesus didn't say anything to her, but just let her touch him. He began to doubt the spirituality of Jesus. He thought that Jesus didn't have any spiritual discernment. As he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is. She is a sinner. He thought that he was clean. And the woman was unclean. He thought that her dirty sin could contaminate Jesus, contaminate himself, and contaminate others, or everything, because she was a sinner. He didn't see the repentance of the woman. He judged her for her past life. He didn't understand her and didn't even try to understand her. He didn't know the heart of Jesus. He didn't know, didn't have the heart of God, even though he was a religious leader. Jesus read his mind and told him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Simon answered, Tell me, teacher. Jesus told him a parable of two debtors. Two people owed money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. You know how much is 500 denarii? One denarius was a usual daily wage of uh, day laborers. It means that work of one day. And uh, I, I calculated the minimum wage of uh, states of Illinois is uh, currently $12. Chicago a little more. Usually one laborer work, works eight hours a day. It means 12 multiply eight, 96 something is 100. We can think that 100, uh, uh, 100 is one, one denarius is $100. So 500 denarii would be equivalent to 50,000, right? 100, yeah, you know how to calculate. <laughs> and 50 denarii can be 5,000. So the two, two debtors didn't have money to pay him back. So money lender forgave the debt of both. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Huh? Jesus asked Simon the Pharisee, now which of them will love him more? Interesting question. We can imagine that you have a student loan. I know that many of us have a student loan. Student loan of 50,000. You don't have money to pay back, pay off. And you lost your job. You are very worried about your student loan. But suddenly the government 
declared the cancellation of all student loan loans. You don't have more any more debt, student loan. Your 50,000 student loan loan was cancelled by the grace of the government. Wow. Will you thank the President Joe Biden or not? <laughs> On the other hand, your friend had a student loan of 5,000 because he had already paid 45,000 back. And his debt of 5,000 was also canceled by the government declaration. He, he, he is happy, but not so much as you are happy, right? Oh, when I paid 40,000 already, he 50, and I only 5,000. You understand, right, this parable? And who will love more, right? And the, this uh, parable, Simon answered, I suppose the one who had a bigger debt forgiven. Yeah, Jesus told that you judged correctly. Simon, however, as we see that you, I suppose, why, why, you, how, why you give these questions? I don't know. You very absurd question, some things. He didn't understand. So Jesus told him the meaning of the parable of two debtors. Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet. But she wet my feet with her tears and wiped with them with her hair. You didn't give me a kiss, but this woman, from time I entered, has not stopped kissing my feet. You didn't put oil on my head, but this, uh, she has uh, poured the perfume on my feet. It was a Jewish etiquette that the host of the banquet offered his honorable guest water for his feet, kiss on the cheek, and a drop of oil on his head. However, Simon didn't offer any of these to Jesus because he didn't consider Jesus to be an honorable guest. He was an important man. He didn't know who Jesus was really, nor didn't he have a personal relationship with Jesus. On the contrary, the woman knew exactly that Jesus was her Lord. Jesus was her Savior. She had a deep and personal relationship with Jesus Christ, and she wet Jesus' feet with her tears and wipe them with her hair. She didn't stop kissing his feet and pulled expensive perfume on his feet. She gave her heart. She gave her love. She gave everything to Jesus Christ. What made Simon and the woman act differently toward Jesus? Jesus told Simon the answer to this question. 47 says, Therefore I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little, loves little. The woman showed his great love to Jesus, because her many sins has been, had been forgiven. While Simon didn't love Jesus, because his sin had not been forgiven. So we can suppose that she had a prior, prior experience of forgiveness with Jesus before coming to Simon's house. Already she had this experience with Jesus, so she came to Jesus with this gratitude to express her love. Through the word of Jesus, we can see a clear relationship between forgiveness and love. What the relationship is between forgiveness and love? The more we have been forgiven from Jesus, the more we love Jesus. Interesting. The more we have been forgiven from Jesus, the more we love Jesus. But this doesn't mean we should commit more sins to be forgiven more. I commit more sins, Jesus will forgive more. No, 
Not this kind of things. It means we must realize that the, the death of our simplest and His amazing grace to be forgiven by Jesus means to be released from the eternal judgment of God. We should be condemned by God due to our sins. However, Jesus was condemned. Jesus died on the cross for our sins in our place. Jesus prayed on the cross saying, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. Thus Jesus opened the way of forgiveness to us. Therefore, we can be forgiven by the precious blood of Jesus Christ when we confess our sins. It is an amazing blessing of God. We can be forgiven. But we have to remember that Jesus paid the cost of our sins with his life. His forgiveness didn't come as like from nothing. It came from the life of Jesus Christ. Therefore, forgiveness is the maximum expression of the love of Jesus for us. The fact that we were forgiven by Jesus means that Jesus loved us with all his life. Really, Jesus loved us before we loved him. 1 John chapter 4, verse 10 says, This is the love, not that we love the God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. This is the love of God. We are here because we were forgiven by Jesus. He's a sacrifice. To be forgiven by Jesus means to be loved by Jesus. Because the woman was loved by Jesus through the forgiveness of her many sins, she loved Jesus greatly. Because we were loved greatly by Jesus, who laid down his life for us, we can, forgive, we can love Jesus greatly with all our heart. Some may say that the woman was a great sinner because she was a prostitute, while the Pharisee Simon was a less sinner because he had lived keeping the laws of God. Is it true? No, it is not true. While the woman was a public sinner, the Pharisee was a hidden sinner. He had a lot of sins also, just it was not revealed. In fact, there is no greater sinner or less sinner. We cannot say that you are worse sinner than me. <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> oh, I live a little better life than this person. No, it's not true. It's not a matter of how much we committed the sin against God, because our sin that we committed is enough. We already committed enough sin against God. But this is a matter of how much we recognize our sins before the presence of God. When we are in front of God, who is holy and glorious, we can clearly see our dirty sins, realize that we are terrible sinners. Sometimes we think that I'm not so terrible sinner. You know why? Because you are not looking at yourself well. Because you are not in the presence of God. If you are in the presence of God, you will be very terrified. And this is a prophet Isaiah. He thought that he was righteous. He complained of God. He complained of his people. But he, when he saw the glorious presence of God, what happened? He was uh, terrified of his sins, saying, Woe to me, I ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, 
And I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. This will be our compassion when we are in the presence of God. We don't need this compassion. Why? Because, because we, we are not sometimes in front of God. Some people say that, oh, I don't feel that I'm a great sinner. Oh, I don't feel that I receive the great love and forgiveness of Jesus. But you know, it is not because Jesus didn't love you. You have to think that it's because I'm, I'm not in front of God. I don't know Jesus because I don't know Jesus. So I think that I didn't receive much grace from Jesus. Someone say that I don't love Jesus passionately. I don't know why. Do you know why? Because you didn't experience this passionate love of Jesus in your life. Or you lost this love. Some people say that, oh, I don't know. I cannot devote Jesus. I'm not so encouraged to do it. Maybe it's because we didn't experience the love of Jesus in our life. If we want to love Jesus more, we need to have this experience of a forgiveness of Jesus more deeply and more personally. Someone may ask that, why we have to love Jesus then? Why? It's a very good question, actually. <laughs> It's a very fundamental question. Why we have to love Jesus? Why we have to worship God? It's because we were created to love Jesus. It's because we were created to worship God. Because this is the meaning of our life, the purpose of our life. To love Jesus, to worship God, is what we have to do as a human being, and what we can do it with a great joy and happiness when we receive the love of Jesus, when we know this great love of Jesus. So, when you love Jesus, our lives can be very happy. Our lives can be very joyful. We can be very fruitful for the glory of God. How can we love Jesus then? How can we experience the love of Jesus? We need to be in the presence of God. In the presence of God. Please pray to meet Jesus newly, to meet His glory. We need to be meet Jesus through the Word of God, meditate on the Word of God. We have to worship God with the whole our heart. Worship God, raising your hands, all your body, body languages. We have to be very free to love Jesus, right? Then really, we can experience this great love of Jesus. We can love Jesus more and more. Also, we can offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. We will feed Jesus in the sheep with a great joy. Not for obligation. Not your separate. Someone said that you have to feed the sheep. Go to fish. Go to fish. <laughs> no, no. We have to say that. Love Jesus more. Meet Jesus. Then you will do. We will obey the word of Jesus. And Jesus told us, do you love me? Feed my sheep. This comes by self. Our life of faith and mission will not be a burden, but be a great joy, great happiness for us. Through the message, I repented of my sins. I received a great forgiveness of Jesus. I was a great sinner. I was atheist, and I denied the existence of God. I opposed, I had many arguments with the people who wanted to preach the gospel. I was very selfish pursuing my success, and I was a hypocrite and seeking lustful desire secretly. I was very arrogant 
believing that I could live without God, but Jesus had mercy on me, changed my life, and He made me know what is really the meaning of my life. So yeah, I, I abandoned my human ambitions. I made a decision to follow Jesus and to live as a shepherd and missionary. I went to Venezuela as a missionary 17 years. I came to America, studied theology, all these things. God really blessed me. But this day I felt that I have forsaken the love I had at first. This day I felt very tired. I don't know why. Preparing message, I was sleeping, sleeping. Oh my God, so difficult. I tried to do something. I was so tired. So I realized that. Sometimes also I thought, oh, what I'm doing here? I want to live a little more comfortable life. Something that. But today's message teaches me that I needed to meet the presence of Jesus, the God. I want to meet God newly. I want to be, I need to be restored by God newly. I want to renew my spirit. I want to restore my personal relationship with God. I want to pray more. I want to really love His word. I want to worship God. By the way, this Thursday we have a praise worship night. Praise God. Worship God. <laughs> I want to worship God. I love you, Jesus. May God help me to serve Jesus wholeheartedly as the woman did. May God help each of us to meet Jesus, to restore our love for Jesus through the forgiveness of our sins. Amen. God bless you.